Welcome to the podcast on management approach to patients with meninivi. This topic has been divided into two podcasts. Part one is intended to provide an overview of the management issues. Part two will provide the management framework I use in my clinical practice. It is a well-established fact that patients with meninivi are at increased risk of developing melanoma. The goal in managing these patients is to find melanoma while the tumor is flat and easily curable by simple surgical excision. However, the challenge faced by the clinician is how to detect melanomas in a sea of many benign nevi. With this goal in mind, there are two schools of thought regarding management. The first school recommends for the prophylactic excision of nevi. The patient in the top left image had over 100 nevi excised and the patient on the bottom left image continues to have nevi excised despite the fact that he's developing keloids within his excision scars. The second school of thought recommends for the selective excision of lesions that are concerning for melanoma, as is the case in the patient depicted on the image on the right side of this slide. The driving force behind these two schools of thoughts differ. For those that want to maximize sensitivity for detecting melanoma at all costs, will opt for the prophylactic removal of nevi, and some have even proposed for the whole-scale removal of large sections of skin containing nevi with the intention of removing any unsuspected melanomas while at the same time preventing the development of any melanomas destined to form within a nevus. The only study regarding the prophylactic removal of nevi was performed by Cohen and colleagues. They concluded that such an approach helped detect early and clinically unsuspected melanomas while at the same time prevented melanomas from developing within a pre-existing nevus. However, what the authors fail to acknowledge is that the risk for developing a melanoma in a pre-existing nevus is very low and that most melanomas develop de novo. Thus, the prophylactic removal of all nevi will likely not significantly alter the risk for developing melanoma. The second school of thought has a goal of trying to maintain a high sensitivity for detecting melanoma while at the same time maximizing on specificity. This is accomplished by obtaining baseline images of the skin. Tucker and colleagues followed patients at very high risk for developing melanoma. They were also able to find early melanomas and also had no patients that succumbed to metastatic disease. So what was the key to their success? It was having baseline photography, which allowed them to compare images over time and help them to identify newer changing lesions, some of which proved to be melanoma. It is well known that change is a sensitive indicator of melanoma, and in one study conferred an odds ratio of 47 for melanoma. To accomplish the task of finding new and changing lesions within a sea of many nevi requires harnessing our comparative recognition abilities. This task is greatly facilitated by obtaining baseline images of the skin. Subsequent skin examinations are compared to the baseline images. Via this method, it is easy to identify changing or new lesions. As can be seen in this patient with many nevi, there is one lesion that has changed, as highlighted by the arrows. Notice that his other nevi all remain unchanged and thus are biologically indolent. The lesion that has changed requires closer inspection to determine whether a biopsy is warranted. Thus, the rationale behind total body photography is that it helps increase sensitivity for identifying new or changing lesions, while at the same time prevents the removal of biologically indolent and unchanging nevi, which translates into an increased specificity. Kelly and colleagues followed a high-risk cohort of patients with total body photography and found that it helped find thinner melanomas. They also found that two-thirds of melanomas developed in novo on normal skin. This highlights the futility of prophylactic excision of nevi. The only randomized trial with total body photography was carried out in Australia. Although the study was not carried out long enough to determine if total body photography helped find thinner melanomas, what the study did show was an improved ability to detect non-melanoma skin cancers and a decrease in the biopsy of benign lesions in the total body photography cohort. In a more recent study, it was shown that patients followed with total body photography had fewer biopsies and an improved benign to malignant ratio as compared to a group followed without total body photography. The main goal in monitoring high-risk patients is to detect early melanomas while at the same time avoiding unnecessary biopsies. 
This entails identifying lesions that could be melanoma and then evaluating the lesion to determine if a biopsy is warranted. In this manner, one can maintain a high sensitivity and specificity for melanoma detection. Dermoscopy is one modality that can be used to further evaluate lesions to determine if a biopsy is warranted. Dermoscopy has been shown to increase diagnostic accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity. In other words, total body photography helps identify lesions of concern and dermoscopy helps evaluate these lesions to determine if the lesion is benign, needs a biopsy, or can be safely monitored. This patient was noted to have a changing lesion as indicated by the arrows. Clinical close-up reveals a lesion with multiple colors and an irregular border. Dermoscopy reveals features suggestive of melanoma. This lesion was excised and proved to be a melanoma. One caveat regarding screening for melanoma is warranted here. Screening high-risk patients helps detect relatively slow-growing superficial spreading melanomas. It cannot help in detecting the rapidly growing nodular melanomas. The reason for this is that nodular melanomas grow at a rate of almost 0.5 millimeters per month. Thus, if the patient is screened today and the nodular melanoma starts tomorrow, then by the time the patient comes in for their next screening examination, the melanoma will already be thick and considered a high-risk tumor. For the discovery of thin nodular melanomas, we need to engage and encourage patients to examine their own skin on a periodic basis. If they see a new or changing lesion, then they need to inform us and we need to see these patients in a timely manner. Please go to part two of this podcast where we'll provide a framework for how I manage patients with many nevi.